Hi, this is Steve Sell from Digital Asset. In this video, we're going to use a scenario to identify a problem that we can solve with demo. We will run the scenario through our checklist and then take a look at the architecture and make sure that we have the business logic, the data model all figured out. And then we'll open up Visual Studio Code and write the code line by line. I'm excited. Stay tuned. So here's a problem that I've not been able to solve over the years. Friends would borrow things from me and fail to return them. Or worse, no one remembers who borrowed what. Not even me. So maybe we can solve this using smart contracts. Hmm, here's a solution. Why don't we create a smart contract app that can record what I borrowed so there'll be no more misunderstandings and both parties will be kept honest. That sounds feasible, but let's run it through the checklist that we have seen in previous videos. So we're going to build an app that tracks borrowed items between friends. And here are five things we need to check for. Are we tracking something of value? Is something valuable that's important? Yes. How about data? Is data being changed? Yes, it is in a way that custody, the chain of custody is moving from one person to another and then back to me. The history is important because if more than one person borrows it, I want to know at what point the camera broke. Should the data be immutable? Absolutely, the data should be immutable because I don't want someone to go back and say, I did not borrow your camera. Fantastic. And what about actions? Are there actions that we can take? Yes, we can return the item, we can release the item to somebody. In a previous video, we looked at our project in four components. The asset, which is the camera, the people and the party, which are friends, and the data. In this case, we're tracking the camera and the information and the use of the camera. And probably most important of all, what happens when you break my camera? How long can you borrow it for? So the logic in this case, or the business logic, will be the rules and the duration and things like that. Let's take a closer look at our architecture. We have the owner and a friend. And let's keep it simple and say that the owner can release an item and a friend can return the item. And instead of writing our own front end, we're going to make use of the navigator to help us test our templates and contracts. And we'll fire everything up in a sandbox so there'll be a ledger that we can write to. Let's jump into the code. Fantastic. Let's uh, fire up a terminal here and start a new uh, demo project. We're going to use the demo new command. Uh, let's take a look at the templates we have. We really want to use the empty skeleton template. So let's try that. We're going to do a my borrow app. Let's call it that using that particular template. Let's cd into the directory and fire up uh, demo studio. Demo Studio is up, and if you open up the demo folder, you realize that there are no demo files because we're going to write one from scratch. So let's do a new file, and uh, let's go ahead and save it. And remember that you do have to save the file uh, according to the name of the module. So I should say it should be identical to the name of the module. In this case, let's call it main.demo. So let's do main.daml and that'll be the name of our module and let's save that. Okay, let's start coding. The first line is always the module. So let's make sure that we have this first line. Remember that where always defines your scope. So next line in three, we're going to do import demo script because we're going to use demo script to test our code on the fly. More on that in a moment. Then let's start writing the template. We're just going to use one template. We're going to call it item custody because the item is being moved from one person to another. And we are really tracking the chain of custody here. So let's call it item custody. The next line will be with, and now we start to define the input variables that's required to create this template or to create a contract. So we've got owner, the custodian, who is going to take my camera and the item name. Let's keep it simple for now. And again, we're going to define another scope. And this is where we start to add the signatory. Who is allowed to create uh, this contract? Remember that this is different than the controller 
who are the people who can perform actions on it or exercise choices. So in this case, we're going to say that the owner uh, can release an item and what we need to release it is just the name of a uh, the friend who is going to receive the item. And what happens when uh, a release item 2 is exercised? Well, we're going to create a contract in the chain out of this template. And we do that by setting a new custodian. So we're going to copy this and duplicate another choice here. And this choice allows the custodian to uh, exercise the choice of returning the, the, um, the borrowed item. So this too will add to the chain, but this time we're going to uh, set the owner back to the rightful owner of the item. So now we have two choices. Now we really want uh, to use script to test our code. So there's one thing we need to do, and that is to open up the daml.yaml file and write the following lines to initiate the uh, script. And I'm going to change this to Jerry and Elaine because I want a navigator to have those two identities built in so that I can test my code. All right, let's go back to the code and we can start writing our script to test our um, template here. So uh, the first thing we want to do is to specify a return type and this will be a contract ID uh, minted from the item custody template. Um, the first thing I will do is to uh, create two parties to play with in this script. One is called Jerry. Uh, the next one will be Elaine. Now this is different in setting them in the daml.yaml. This is the test script. The other one is for the navigator. Awesome. I got Jerry. I got Elaine. Now notice this uh, squiggly here that tells me something's wrong. You can fix it by uh, uh, encapsulating this in a pair of parentheses, but notice that we use it quite a bit in our code. So what you can do is to create a type, and let's call it item custody ID, and define it as uh, what we see at the bottom. And instead of uh, the two, we'll replace that with item contract, item custody ID. Done. Awesome. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have Jerry buy the camera and give himself custody of the camera. So he's going to create this new uh, collect a uh, new property that he owns and give himself custody and he can start to do things to the item like borrowing it to friends. So that's why the custodian is still Jerry in the first round. This is a an expensive camera. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's call it a really expensive camera. Now that he bought the camera and has uh, custody of the camera, uh, we can have Jerry give uh, or borrow the camera to um, Elaine. And that is the choice that we're going to use called release item 2. So let's do a exercise command. And we're going to exercise uh, the particular camera and the choice. And we need to specify a friend. In this case, it's Elaine. And that should be good. Now, we're going to copy the line starting from submit and have Elaine return the camera back to Jerry. And she has to act on and exercise uh, the contract that was uh, hers in line 44. So she's going to return item to the rightful owner, the input parameter name, and the value is Jerry. So let's take a look at a script and we see that it's correct. We have a archived uh, instance and you see that Elaine doesn't get to see what Jerry bought in the first place. That is correct, a correct behavior. Until she's involved, she doesn't need to see it. So we've got these four components and Let's take a closer look at the data. What if we want to track more information about the camera? Most cameras, like DSLR or mirrorless, has a shutter count, which means how many times you snap the picture. So let's use that since we can count it uh, and it tells us how much use was uh, uh, inflicted on the camera. So let's call it meter count and let's call it, uh, let's set it as an integer. 
So now we have to modify our create uh, command here, our create lines here, and uh, set the meter count. So remember that this is the shutter clicks that we can measure as it moves from person to person in a chain. Um, here at the bottom as well, well, we should really change this to um, something where we can input. So Jerry can input and say, well, this was X number of uh, shutter clicks when I created it, uh, when I loan it out. So um, let's go back to, let's go down to where we exercise the borrow release to command and uh, set the mm, curry. Um, set the current meter count to, uh, let's say, 347. You know what? Let's change that to 360, assuming that he got it at 347 and he clicked it a couple of times and it became 360. Uh, at the top, we want to be able to return the item. And likewise, we're going to have a meter count uh, reported when it's returned. And let's say Elaine goes crazy and cl adds 10,000 clicks to it. And you see that it's being tracked from 340 to 360 to 10,004 clicks. Jerry is not going to be happy. Anyway, you know how we all have that nosy neighbor who wants to know everything? Let's add that nosy neighbor in as an observer. can do anything, but just want to be able to know what's happening with everything. We're going to add a new party. And at the bottom, we're going to create a Kramer uh, as a party. And this Kramer will be uh, the uh, nosy neighbor. Now, how this nosy neighbor will work into the contract is that he will be an observer. An observer gets to see the transactions. And you see that Kramer is correctly reflected in the output in that he can see the contracts. Okay, we are ready for the navigator. So let's uh, comment out the top line that, that imports this, the demo.script and comment out this entire block here so we disable the script from running and go to uh, daml.yaml and at the uh, where you see this line just uh, comment it out with a uh, with a hashtag and then let's add kramer so that the navigator gives us kramer as a choice awesome let's go to our terminal and do a demo start give it a few seconds and you should see the sandbox and the navigator fired up and when the navigator is done, you automatically uh, see a browser. Let's open it up. And we see we have a choice of the three names. We'll log in as Jerry and see that uh, there's a contract, uh, there's a template that he can uh, start working with. Let's do that. Let's create uh, the very first item by specifying the owner, the custodian. Fantastic. And um, this will be the uh, nosy neighbor, Kramer. The item we're talking about is the camera. And um, let's say the meter count, uh, we, I think we say it started at 347. And now we have our very first contract created out of that template. And it states that he has custody of it. And now that he has custody of it, uh, he can do things with it. But just to be sure, let's take a look at Kramer and see if he can see all that. Yep, he can see that very same contract that Jerry created because he's an observer. Now, if we were to log in as Elaine, what would she see? Absolutely nothing because uh, she's not involved in this uh, contract quite yet. But Jerry can get her involved by uh, letting her borrow the camera. So we're going to go ahead and do that. That this particular item is going to be uh, transferred to her custody. And now we have a new block added to the chain. Uh, if we were to take a look at the contracts here, we would see that there is an archived, which is the very first instance, and the second one. And the second one would state that same item, same owner, same, uh, same observer, but now the camera is, is in the custody of Elaine. And who can see this contract? Well, Kramer, the nosy neighbor, and Elaine, because she's involved in this contract. Let's uh, make sure. Elaine can see the contract. Good. And let's log in as Kramer. Kramer can see the contract. Fantastic. So both of them uh, made observers of this particular chain here. Now let's log, as, uh, log in as Elaine and return the item back to Jerry. 
So we're gonna go ahead and say that we're gonna return this to Jerry and we added over, over uh, 10,000 clicks. Uh, so that thing goes back, a new block is added to the chain and you see that it is returned to Jerry. Now back in Jerry's account, can he see the latest custody? Oops, we got a problem. The custodian is still listed as Elaine. It should be Jerry now that he has the camera back. No sweat, we'll fix it. Let's head back to VS Code and take a quick look. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to re-enable the script so that I can see uh, if we have uh, fixed it correctly. So let's remove the comment here. And then at the bottom, let's remove the block of comments. And don't forget the demo.yaml file. Take that off. All right, back to the code. And uh, everything looks good here. Let me check something real quick to make sure that the demo script output is correct. Uh, for the current value here, let me change that to, yep, that's working. Fantastic. Let me see what happens in a do block. Now, I have assigned the owner um, here, so it should really be custodian. The owner doesn't change throughout the lifetime of the contract, so the custodian should be uh, the rightful owner here. So let's try that, save it, and uh, go back to our navigator but before i do that let's just uh, rerun the sandbox and navigator and once it is uh, up and running let's do exactly what we did and see if the if jerry's made the rightful owner all right here's the navigator let's log in as jerry and jerry will start by uh, creating a a camera item setting himself as the custodian to start adding Kramer as an observer and uh, 347 and first entry is done now we are going to check to make sure that yep so Jerry has custody and he's gonna let Elaine borrow it at 360 clicks now let's log in as Elaine make to make sure that Elaine has custody perfect now let's uh, return the, let Elaine return the camera back to Jerry at 10,000 clicks. She returns it. Now let's go back to um, Elaine. Up, oh, yep, she can no longer see the contract because uh, she has archived it from her end. But we can uh, go back to Jerry because the baton has been passed to him. He sees an active contract and ta da! The camera is back in his possession. Wonderful. So I hope you found that useful. Granted, this was a very simple scenario. And in a real world context, you're going to have more templates, parties, choices. In future videos, we'll use more complex scenarios. But I hope this video gave you a good idea of how the demo framework works. Join me in future videos. See ya.